Hello, Switz. How are we doing? No, not bad, man. Not bad. I can't complain. Good. Everyone can hear everyone all right? I think so. I hope so. <laughs> Otherwise, we're just talking to ourselves again. Which is kind I of told, I, I, told old Pam, I told old Pam I put it up on YouTube for him later. <laughs> I also told people that uh, Pam Quats has a secret tattoo that he doesn't like to show off. So you have to keep asking him about it. And uh, you keep asking about it a lot, and he'll show it to you. It's like a little Columbus Blue Jackets. If anyone gets to see Pem's tattoo, I will give you basically a free sub of the channel of your choice. So please ask Pem about his hidden tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm back. Oh, dear. Oh, man. It, man, uh, what was, <clears throat> it, was it the last weekend the con was on? No, two weekends. Two weekends ago. Two weekends ago. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. Two weekends ago, we went to Niagara Falls Comic Con here. Yeah. Uh, how long have we been going? Like, I've lost track. Uh, this was the 11th year of the convention. Okay. Um, we, <clears throat> the 10th anniversary was, no, yeah, this was the 10th. 10th anniversary should have been two years ago. It was canceled by the pandemic. They came back and did their 10th anniversary edition in their 11th year, I believe, right? Or was it 12th year? 12th year, I think. Like they, um, they took two years off. Yes, they did actually. Yeah. And um, so, yeah. yeah 19 and, uh, well, 20 and 21 were taken off, and then they came back in 22 for the 10th anniversary. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, was it 06 when we started going? Well, I started going. Excuse me. Um, I went to the second one, and okay. I think we started going from the third, and third or fourth one on. I think so. Around that time. So we've been going yeah. for a while. Yeah. And um, I guess I've lost track. We've been to six or seven. I know. I think I've been to six, I think. Yeah. Um, <coughs> so. And and it's always been a hoot. Yes. We've always had some kind of adventure going to them and all that. Yep. Uh, we'll get into the bit, though. I like to ask, basically, um, general thoughts of this year, Con. What do you think? Compared to last, compared to prior years, Con's. A disappointment a little bit of a disappointment yeah, um, I agree. for a number of reasons um the layout and organization was not very well thought out i don't think or or it was thought out but it wasn't well executed um it could have been laid out a lot better i think um, there was a lot of congestion around the, uh, the celebrity tables. Um, the massive line for people who had already paid for and bought tickets to, to get in, uh, was, uh, crazy. Um, <clears throat> we have a viewer. <laughs> it's Pam. Yep. <laughs> yep. Um, yeah. <clears throat> the, uh, the lineup was, was insane to, to get into the building. Um, they really need to reevaluate how they do the admissions into the building on the um, second and third days. It's, it's the, a three-day convention, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Uh, a lot of people get the um, three-day pass. And if you've got a three-day pass, there should be, I think, an express line to um, get you in. Once you, you've got your wristband and are, are returning, you should be able to get in a lot easier than than um, they allowed this year. Yeah. yeah. So I'll give my quick thoughts and we can break it down yeah. section by section. I thought yeah. it was a stumble. Um, yeah. I'll go so far. I'll go. I'll go so bold as to say the last con prior to COVID, I thought they were an upward swing and they were going to be a major con player in North America and can North America be a destination. Um with the stumble of COVID and the failure of, uh, of, um, oh, got there. The failure of the 10th con falling apart with some good guests. I don't think they ever recovered from that. They, they were really lacking a headliner this year. Yeah. So, uh, let's break down like a, admission. A, a yeah. true headliner. Yeah. Let's break down admission first because that's one of the biggest things that, yeah. So, Switz and I have a plan. 
I get the three day pass because one, it's it's cheaper in the long run. We go down Friday, we get our we get our bracelets, and we we slip in uh, easy peasy, no problem, right? Well, because on, on Friday it usually starts around three o'clock, I think. Yep. Two two or three o'clock, the yep. doors open and it goes till eight o'clock. Eight o'clock, yeah. Eight o'clock. So it's, yep. a, it's a decent day. Yep. Um, but yeah, we usually get there around four. Yep. Um, just because we're old men. Exactly. And and depending on what your travel schedule is when you when you actually arrive. Exactly. Um, we get our, our gear together and we uh, hit the road, Jack. Yep. Uh, we get out there and we, we do the lay of the land and see yep. what's going on. Yeah. And we we can slide in probably in under 10 minutes till we get in, no problem. And the crowd is the crowd the con <laughs> isn't very crowded because the major headliners are there. Sunday's the same way. But let's bring back up Saturday because that's that's what we're you're talking about. Yep. Um, yep. As Switch says, there were several problems. One is there's one way, there's two ways to get in. One is for if you have already have your bracelets like we do, and another way is basically the VIP Express Pass, which I'm not paying for because I'm not get, playing for the exclusive entrance. It's just too much. Um, yeah, for for the uh, for the level of like interesting guests, it was not... like two point five times the cost of a weekend pass, which is not worth it. Um, but Swiss and I had our bracelets. We got down to the con about an hour and a half after it opened, right? Um, it opened we, at 10 o'clock on yeah, Saturday, and we got yeah. there around 11.30. Yeah. I'm around there, yeah. Um, by the time we got in line, we were backed up. We were actually lined up around almost the back of the convention center. It took us about 45 minutes for us to get in with a steady kind of flow of, of people going to the con. No skin off our nose because we were patient. Um, but still, though, had it been hotter... It, it's it was 45 minutes sure we, we made some friends in line or whatever but it's yeah. 45 minutes of, of a little bit less fun exactly which we're denied on yeah. uh the super ugly talk about the people who didn't have tickets yeah yep um they were outside waiting i know between two and four hours to be admitted to the con due to capacity they oversold it they oversold it yeah. so imagine coming all the way to niagara falls for a saturday for a saturday because some guests are only there on saturday paying four dollars to park no joke. And then having to wait <laughs> two to four hours to, to may or may not even get in. And if you got in, it was cash only for tickets, which was another kind of major complaint. For the for people buying tickets at the door that day. Yeah, cash only. That seems like a, a snafu. Yeah, and I guess that's always been the case, so I don't understand, but it was uh, I know people <laughs> there was no because we plan ahead and buy the three day pass, yeah. but there was there was a lot of uh, we call I call it negative customer experience, mm. and in retail and theme parking and all that, the more negative experience you have, the more people tell they had negative experience and they don't return basically. So you know that's basically. I, I, I did see a lot of comments on the uh, the Facebook group and stuff like, oh, this is my last year to go to this convention. Yep, and I looked at the cost of going to like Fan Expo. It was not that bad of a difference. I think it was ten bucks difference. Yeah, yeah, and for triple triple a stars yep and for 15 dollars more i get my own private entrance yeah and a lounge <clears throat> yeah and, uh, <clears throat> and one free day admission to any future uh expo except 24 24 tell yep. me that's not appealing yep yeah, yeah. uh so uh let's switch gear to guess because you're talking but about whether, that whether right. they do that every year or not i don't know this is the first year we actually looked at it so yeah that, that future coupon is a real thing or if that's just a yeah. one-time offering this year only i do know the lounge the private entrance like is 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 always offered i'm like hmm. hmm and like you said triple a guests and uh yeah let's segue to the guests the good bad and the ugly about the guests yep do you do you have uh do you have slides for the list of them at all still or let me see i th I'll, I'll get them there let me look for them here basically i, I know i yeah. kept them i kept them all yeah let me see here but um, like I said, I, uh, I think that because they had um, quite a few cancel, they had what fifteen oof. guests out of forty cancel. At least that much, yeah. Like we're we're talking over twenty five percent here. Um, but they they claimed it was under twenty five percent because they had um, booked new guests to take their place. Yes, but still, <clears throat> there was a, a large number of uh, cancellations um, for. A lot of reasons. Um, the the shocking one, I guess, would be uh, on Friday night when they announced that many of the people who would be there Saturday um, would not be attending 
due to uh, travel restrictions and travel complications yeah. from wildfires. And, and that was uh, a big bone of contention with a lot of fans because uh, I don't know if this is true or not. They they claim that the convention organizers knew about the cancellations much earlier in the day than when they announced it to the public. And I would argue they if, did. If so that that's really really kind of uh, poor on their their side because we know there are no refunds, but you could have saved some people a lot of of time and money and hassle for if they know that my guest is not going to be there. Uh, I'm not going to bother driving down to Niagara Falls. I'm not going to fly into Niagara Falls. I'm not going to take the train down and get to Niagara Falls. I'm not going to book my hotel or I'm going to, I'm just going to cancel the weekend completely and I'm out the price of my ticket. Okay. Big deal. When you're out the price of your ticket, plus you're now in a tourist trap town with, um, supposedly nothing to do or, or your reason being canceled, then, then you're going to be a little ticked off. Oh, absolutely. <clears throat> and um that announcement came late friday late friday night it was like and 10 o'clock wasn't it it was literally under the radar and it was just like oh by the way here's four people that aren't going to make it basically yeah and boom. here's our big stars weren't coming see ya yeah that's literally, that's literally what it was and like i said the big ones that killed people were uh rick flair rick flair was and, the biggest of them and uh john glover they were both disappointed rick flair was huge though um there's a huge um Wrestling. In a way, I'm kind of glad he canceled. Oh yeah, um, just because <clears throat> the, uh, the the glut of uh, congestion of people looking for the wrestling guest was was insane, yeah. and that that caused a lot of the um, the travel issues or the um, the traffic uh, flow issues inside the convention floor was, was oh, yeah. the uh, the wrestling guests because they had a lot of people going for them. Now, I don't know if they all showed up for the ones who were there or if the ones who um, were there to see somebody who canceled then just decided to, while I'm here anyway, I'll spill over to these other wrestling stars. <clears throat> yeah. Um, I'm just doing a quick total here, uh, Switz. Yep. Out of um, 46 announced guests, we yep. had 15 cancellations. Okay. Yeah. So one quarter of their guests actually canceled. And like I said, Ric Flair was a huge cancellation. I know a lot of people drove a long way and money ready to see him. And when he wasn't there, it was really outrageous. And there's also another Rick, staff here Rick too. Ric Flair is, is a wrestling legend. Yep. Um, and Ric Flair is also 74 years old. Yep. So to have him come to a Canadian convention is one thing. To have him come at his advancing age is another because you have to look at some of these guys and think how many more of these are they going to do are they going to come to canada that's probably a bigger no they're probably not going to come back to canada william daniels um, made it <clears throat> yeah <laughs> but but i'm saying like yeah these you have to take them while they offer it yeah if they say they're coming to a convention in canada and you want to see that person go to it because yeah. when, when they're getting up there, they might not make it for that many more. And even if they do continue to do the convention circuit for another 10 years, say, say he does it until he's 85 or whatever, yeah. is he going to want to come back to another country to do it? Probably not. Yeah. So I, I ran the numbers here. Niagara Falls uh, had a 30% cancellation rate, which is not good. And they, they yeah. actually <clears throat> average 10 to 15% cancellation guest rate, which is, I don't think is a good one. Uh, the other the other staff that people were absolutely outraged by, Bret Hart was only there for three hours, from twelve yep. to three, yep. and only and he only he only signed for two hours, and he was gone. People were livid; they couldn't get into the con to see Bret Hart again. Well, he yeah. he stayed as long as he could. Uh, yep. Rumor has it that he was doing it as a, a stopover trip on his way to something Phil, else. Phil Moulton Dove too, I think. No, it could be. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but yeah. Uh, and as you mentioned before, too, and we'll make a little bit of gripe about it, old man. It is old man, the grumpy theater. Uh, the wrestling, uh, the wrestling guests and fans overpowered the other the other fans that are present, basically. The comic fans and the pop culture yeah. fans. I uh, we talked. I, I, I argue that it's no longer a comic con. It, it's a pop culture con. It's borderline wrestling rust for a yeah. long time now. Yeah, um, it's borderline wrestle con too at this point. Well, I, I dump wrestling into pop culture. Yeah. 
I mean, but, uh, with, with the big mix of horror uh, and the big mix of um, just actors and actresses who are are not comic related. Very true. Extremely like, true. Who who was um, uh, Harry Hamlin's wife? Uh, uh, Lisa something. She's like a real Beverly Housewife or something like that. Yeah, real housewives or whatever. Yeah, she's not a, a comic. Well, actress or or, had, or uh, neither, Tina Ferrari. neither really is Harry Hamlin. Well, Tina Ferrari is a drummer for the Go Go's. She was yeah. there. Yeah. Um, but like I said, some of the vendors we talked to were kind of griping that um, the 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 attendees that were being attracted were not interested in buying prints and geek stuff and all that. They were looking for. Well, just the rest of themselves and all that. So yeah, the wrestling, the wrestling fans don't cross over to the other side of the the pump culture um, no. street. They, See, they, yeah, the wrestling fans are not necessarily Star Wars fans. They're not necessarily Doctor Who fans. They're not necessarily fans of spray painted art. They're not necessarily fans of um, horror art. There's a lot of horror art. They're not necessarily a fan of uh, Funko Pops. They're not necessarily a fan of homemade jewelry and things like that. They are going to do their corner and that's it. And then all these other people who were vendors for all this other stuff that, that traditionally does well at Comic-Cons were um, shut out by, I would say, a good third to 40 percent of the uh, the attendees. I'd even go so far to argue that the wrestling people were just coming to get the autographs and leaving again. Yeah. They're skipping the rest of the con, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's something yeah. to consider, too. Yeah. Uh, but let's talk about the good for the guests. Let's talk about experiences we had. Yeah. Yeah. Because <clears> uh, <throat> the, the, the wrestling guests are great because they do, I understand why they do it, because they do bring people in. They are draws. Yes. And you do want as many people there in your convention as possible. And you are hoping for that spillover business. You're hoping that someone who's there to see Bret Hart or Tristratus or Lita are going to now um, go talk to William Daniels, who is uh, the voice of Kit and Knight Rider. You're going to yeah. hope that they talk to um, somebody else that's there and buy an autograph there, buy some merchandise there, wander the merchandise tables, wander the artist's alley, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. yep. you, you can't sell them that stuff if you don't get them in the building, and at least the wrestling fans are in the building. Now, it, now it's your job to convert them into buying something else, not just what they're there for. You got to upsell them. Exactly. Yep. Um, <clears throat> well, we met um, Trish, Trish Stratus. Yep. Yep. Absolutely divine lady. Yep. Um, took lots of time with all our fans. We took a sound to get through. Yeah. Yeah. Both, both her and Lita, uh, yep. both famous women's wrestlers um, had massive lines yeah. uh i would argue that they had the biggest lines there no question they cut off several times i mean aside from bret hart on his saturday appearance yeah i would argue too that they got lucky that uh lead and trish on a major wrestling angle that would help their appeal but yeah trish status is canadian royalty you know for all kinds <clears throat> of purposes like i said we wash or take at least 10 minutes for every guest just to talk to them and all that and yeah go above yeah. beyond absolutely wonderful person to engage with um i got a kick out of billy zane <laughs> <laughs> i know i went up and got a phantom autograph from him you know star of the titanic and all that yep. and uh i found him very down to earth very laid back and apparently he's a fan of physical media yes yes he is and he um <laughs> really he actually liked my titanic story <clears throat> he did <laughs> he also got excited when you mentioned you had a video store. Yes, yes. Everyone, everyone knows the Billy Zane was in the Titanic movie by James Cameron. Um, I have not seen that movie. I am probably one of the very few people on the planet who have not seen the Titanic. Spoilers. The Titanic. Boat sinks. Uh, yeah. Well, that that was my my logic before is that I know how the story ends. The boat sinks. Um, Billy's there says, "No, no, it's the greatest love story of all time." But yeah, 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 sure, sure. There's no room on the door. But let me tell you my Titanic story, because I do have one. My grandmother used to say that her parents had tickets to the, to the Titanic, but for the second voyage. Now, whether that's true or not, we have no idea, because 
Nana used to like to spin a yarn or two, even when she wasn't knitting. Um, Put up dots. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it, it's entirely possible she made that up just to, to fleece us, us grandchildren there. But it's still a, kind of a cool story or a fun story to think about. Because if they actually did have tickets to the second voyage, well, you can't prove it because obviously you would have refunded your ticket and handed it in and gotten your money back because you, <laughs> you couldn't you couldn't think of saving this ticket without getting money back for it as a collectible that we were something down the road. Right. Times were tight. You needed the money back then. Um, <laughs> but if, if they had made it on the first journey, I, I wouldn't be here probably. I'd be doing old man theater with myself. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm fine. But I'm yeah. uh, uh <laughs> We did ask Billy Zane about the Phantom sequel, and without missing a beat, he says, I've been trying for 25 years. He's yep. got a plan. He's got a plan. He yeah. wants one. So the, the writer's strike is kind of yeah. definitely hindering that now, but you never know. If um, he's got a, a script fairly completed or an outline completed, yeah. maybe this is the time to get it done because when all this stuff sorts itself out, um, studios might be anxious to pick up just anything. Anything Absolutely. that's done and polished and in the can. Probably. And and ready to go. Mm -hmm. uh, highly recommend meeting Billy Zane if you ever get a chance. He's a great guy, down to earth guy, and like I said, great interaction with him, hundred um, percent. You you spoke to Harry Hamlin, didn't you? I did. I uh, got a few minutes there with Harry Hamlin, and he was uh, he was a really cool guy to talk to. Star of Clash of the Titans, Perseus. Yep, mm -hmm. uh, he was uh, eager to talk about Clash of the Titans. Um, he was eager just to talk to anybody about about his life and his his, uh, his projects that he's done. Uh, even the the stuff with his wife there, who was on the uh, the the Real Housewives show. Uh, there were a lot. There were people behind me or who came up with me who were just talking to him as well, who um, really wished that he would do his own Real Housewife show with his wife. I'd watch that. Uh, yeah, uh, a Harry and Lisa show. Uh, I'd watch that. Uh, and and that would be interesting, yeah. But, uh, yeah, he, he also had uh, great things to say about uh, Burgess Meredith, who was uh, obviously the oh, wow. trainer there in, uh, in Clash of the Titans. I didn't uh, I didn't get to ask him what he thought of the uh, the remakes there. I wish I, I did. Oh, but... yeah, that would have been a good one to... Yep. Well, that's the thing. Sometimes with these guests, you, you almost need to make uh, little, little notes on your cuff there to... Uh, remind yourself what to uh, say to them when you get up there because um, even though I will have to admit that the Niagara Falls guests are not top, top, upper echelon tier guests, you do get a little starstruck still. You do. And, yeah. and you, you lose what you were going to say to them. And you could have had the greatest convert or question in your mind um, 10 minutes to go in line, but when you get up there, you, you blank. You do. Yeah. you know yeah um i met i met i met would, uh, would it look weird to come up with a notebook yeah it would it would yeah so <laughs> you you think of three questions or try to remember at least one to ask and all that yeah um that, that might be a good a good convention tip we use for for next year there to everybody yeah. a little notepad or something just in case you want to ask oh, something yeah because you trust me you you will get starstruck i don't care how yep. how cool you are you will get starstruck um i saw doug bradley to get an autograph for serena uh pinhead from hellraiser uh loves his fans loves his his body work doesn't shy away from it uh basically he refused to take money at the table for a selfie come we have selfies and all that had a great talk with him about uh uh about his work and other stuff he's done and all that uh, he says he's enjoyed going to cons meeting fans he's really appreciative of being able to pay, play pinhead and he has some of the best penmanship i've seen in my life uh his autograph was done in a very fine uh, Sharpie and it looked amazing. And he told me to, uh, I said, this is for my daughter, Serena. She's a big fan. Oh, he writes something. He goes, tell Serena, I will see her in hell. And, oh, that was cool. <laughs> uh, and uh, I had the patience of a saint, uh, uh, that guy. And I, like I said, if you're a horror fan, yeah, please check him out. I, that's another, another good recommendation. Doug Bradley is, yeah, one to go see. Um, I saw John Hedder. Napoleon Dynamite. Yes, you, you uh, said that he was was absolutely manic. 
he was manic. He was bouncing around like it, like like it was no stopping. He had drip on um, to rival my drip. Um, it was like, like I couldn't believe it, right? And I watched him because he's sitting next to Pedro. That was um, Efron uh, um, uh, Rodriguez. Uh, Martinez, is it Efron? Let's see here, R- Ramirez. Ramirez, yes. Yep. And he kept harassing him, giving him massages, trying to dance with him, doing music. He goes, dude, I'm trying to do, trying to do autographs. He goes, he's on a table going like this and all this kind of stuff, just going crazy. And uh, he just, he just, he just has fun. Went up there basically. I said, you know, talked to him about Napoleon Dynamite, uh, saying, um, you know, Texas mom is a big, uh, just like heaven fan. He goes, really? That's awesome. He says, I'm glad you're like, he sounds like Napoleon Dynamite. Uh, like literally, he goes, sweet dude. Like literally. Um, good interaction with them. Uh, if you're a hardcore not pulling dynamite fan, I'd said sure, but if not, yeah, you can probably skip him. But he was fun. Um, and next to him was set up um Michael Rosenbaum, who um, after watching him interact with guests and all that, I kind of want to go see him. This guy was having time of his life. He played Lex Luthor in Smallville. Um, he was doing random quizzes and, and stuff like that. Not, not just Lex Luthor, but he was also the voice of the Flash in the uh, the Justice League cartoon. The great one, yeah. Mm-hmm. I watched him leave the table. He went shopping, came back with a whole armload of stuff and all that. So uh, Michael Rosenbaum is not just a great <coughs> guest. He's also <coughs> a super fan. Yeah, and, and those are the guests you like to see there. Oh, yeah, because they have, how the fun is just having them at the con themselves. Well, it's like Eric Estrada there, who yeah. was, was oh my uh, God. last year, who was a, 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 a super fan again. He yeah. uh, he enjoyed wandering the floor. He enjoyed seeing the stuff that people were buying from, even if it had nothing to do with him. He wanted to see what people had picked up, what they had found there. And oh man, Eric Estrada was a surprise. Um, that, that's the myth. And not just a surprise that he was sitting beside Larry Wilcox. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it just basically you you think Eric Estrada comes across as kind of you know no offense, kind of a douche. You know, he would be stick up and all that. This guy is humble as apple pie. Um, he knows where he came from, knows how much his fans mean to him. And uh, I would love to, I love to go on this QA because we were asking him questions. And the way he pronounced it was like, we asked him basically, what was your first role or favorite role, or whatever? And well, I believe was, his first role was, um, I think I brought it up, was um, Kolchak the Night Stalker, or it was he, a very early role. He said his first role. I'll never forget this because he looked at us and he, could, he thought, you could, you see the love in his eyes. He goes, I played so and so and cross and switchblade. I was 19 years old. I got paid X amount of dollars. It was my first role that got me my right. SAG card, he said. And you tell you, oh, yeah. Yep. And, uh, you know, again, absolutely. Uh, uh, I, I, I couldn't believe it, basically. He was um, a lot of fun. Um, Nia Nilo was expensive autograph. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> the most expensive autograph didn't show up. Well, I guess would have been Ric Flair, right? Would have been Ric Flair, but um, guess who was number two? Well, I know who are you asking to yeah. guess. Yeah, Giancarlo Esposito, Gus from uh, Breaking, Breaking Bad, Bad and, Moff Gideon, and so and so from the boys. Hundred ten dollars, most expensive autograph, and he had no well, shortage of people lining up. Wasn't Bret Hart more than that though? Uh, Bret Hart was a hundred bucks, I think. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Bret Hart was a hundred. Flair was yep. 130. At 110, he had no shortage of people. Yep. And I tell you what, you think you think he was gonna be a Shatner? No, nope. you got the $110 experience. He was right there <laughs> laughing, giving it all as, as I would too for hundred dollars. I'd be like, I, I, whatever. I think he gave someone a back row. I think he did too, actually. Yeah. I um I watched him come in from a break, being led by all the Imperial cosplayers, holding yep. the dark saber, shouting, Long live the Empire in the Moff Gideon <laughs> voice. Again, another fun guest, most expensive, uh, but you definitely got your money worth from him, that's for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, I took a spin and I actually saw some of the horror guests. I, I thought I'd take a chance to see the um, Terrifier people. I'm, so, I'm not a horror fan, as you you may may or may not remember <laughs> fans. I, uh, I live in a creaky house of crazy neighbors and an ex-wife. I, I don't need horror to make me jump at every noise that, yeah. that happens in the night. Yeah. Uh, we both went and saw Lauren Levera together, I mm-hmm. think, right? She yep. was a stunt woman in, uh, well, scratch that, an actress basically in Terrifier One and Two. Uh, had a role and in Iron Fist the director as well. Yep, was that? We yeah. saw the director first. Yeah, yeah. and she was a uh, role in Iron Fist. Again, absolute sweet, sweet person. Uh, love talking about her roles. Love talking about what we were doing. 
at the con and mm-hmm. stuff like that in our interest. Asked about our future projects. Uh, I guess one's called The Fetist. Sounds absolutely disturbing. Yep. And uh, <laughs> you could not ask to meet a nicer person. Again, I'm glad I went and saw her and got her autograph. Uh, she wrote Stay Spooky Online. Very sweet. <laughs> um, we decided to take a chance. I want to go see the director of, of The Terrifier. I figured since he's got a third movie coming at seven figures, he might be the next big thing. So I we went and saw uh, Damien Leon. Or a next best thing. Big a thing. next best thing, eh? Uh, Damien Leon had a great talk with them. Apparently, we it's true. Uh, he's been talked with Sam Raimi to do some work. Uh, DC invited him in to talk and look, says, here's our archives. Find something to make. Find what you want to do. Yeah. He wouldn't so. tell us. He couldn't say. I said, can't able. Can't able. Um, <laughs> this guy is, again, absolutely a thrill to talk to. Didn't I'm going to take a guess. I'm going to say um, Phantom Stranger. I hope so. Uh, again, another great that, guy. Really, really well, creepily done. Yeah, you know, I thought Can't Able because that's just basically like you know House of Horror and stuff like that. Mm. Uh, again, another great guy. I'm glad he's got success. I'm looking forward to it. I love to talk to him again. And I did not know this, but he did the he did the makeup for Arthur Clown. Yeah, because um, Arthur Clown was there, who looked like basically eighty suburban dad, <laughs> who had to go then do his photo shoot in costume. Yeah. So Damien says, "Excuse me, I gotta go do his makeup." <laughs> you know. <laughs> uh so uh those i think that we actually actually saw uh i also noticed that henry thomas is doing good business as elliot from et yep uh, i was i was surprised to see a lot of people um a lot of younger people yes. actually getting jerry mathers autograph and stuff i was too actually and like who out there remembers jerry mathers without without us saying what his character's name was <laughs> chime in chime in without using google no no one knows no one knows no, he was no leaving to beaver yeah theodore cleaver and the fact that the well we saw when was the show on like the uh the late 50s late 50s yeah mid mid to late 50s probably uh yeah, about we, that. we saw the show as as reruns obviously uh i saw them <laughs> okay, Bernie, I was going to say it. Uh, Hemi has never seen it. Yep. Um, we saw it as reruns, obviously. Oh yeah, I, I saw it. Nick at um, night, stuff like that. On, on, well, I saw it at lunchtime from uh, from school. It was on at like eleven thirty or whatever. I never and saw it, it actually. Just before really. the Flintstones on uh, Channel Three CKBR. <laughs> you know where I saw him first? Marry your children. children. Marry your children. <laughs> you know, <laughs> tell yourself. <laughs> And Bud Bundy said, I heard you to get in your chair and bark for a quarter, and he got fed up and walked off, whatever. Uh, but yeah. Here, here, which was a really good episode and really kind of played into the, the whole convention thing, really. It was. Uh, yeah, he, yeah. He was there to open the supermarket. But uh, yeah, at least his dad never sold shoes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Trailer Park Boys were kind of the headliners. They did good they, business. They became the, the um, de facto headliners there, the yeah. uh, impromptu, hey, we need a headliner. Trailer Park Boys, you're up. Since, exactly. Since they got them there since they have a big following, obviously, uh, and also because um, they had the, the car there. Yep. Or, or a version of the car. Free to get in and take your pictures with. Yep. They did good business. They're great with their fans. They were always in character. Um, brought all their merch of them, their chips, their hot sauces on the cell. Yep. Um, all in all, basically, I thought that was pretty good. I'm going to take a quick wrap upstairs here, switch, take a little quick little break here. Yeah, the shipmobile morning. My dog's out. Yep. Um, yep. We got all the thoughts on the guest here, basically. And if you want to touch upon the uh, Dot 2 escape room. Oh, yes. <laughs> I'll, I'll, be, I'll be right back. <laughs> well, I, I did it perfectly. <laughs> <clears throat> Yes, we uh, we visited a lot of old friends there at the show, and last year we did um, the Doctor Who Escape Room put on by the uh, Doctor Who uh, Society of Canada. Um, they have two escape rooms this year. They have the one that we did last year, but they also had one called a um, Fandom Freakout, I think it was called. And it was not just Doctor Who themed, but more more widely ranged with uh, a whole bunch of pop culture themes to it. Um, and we decided to do that uh, because escape rooms are fun. Uh, they, they still are. 
um, and they can be challenging, um, especially if there's only two of you. Uh, we were given 45 minutes to uh, solve five puzzles and get out of the room. Um, we waited and waited as long as we could for, for more people to uh, walk down the hall and potentially sign up. But uh, unfortunately, it was just the two of us who went through. Uh, and I believe we solved three out of the five puzzles, and we were very close on the fourth um, with a little bit of guidance from the Game Master. Uh, or, or our, our handler inside the room. Um, and he, he said that we did very well. He was very surprised that we did as well as we did, just, just being the two of us. Uh, <laughs> we, could, uh, we could have definitely used a little bit of uh, assistance there, but um, we, we muddled through okay. Uh, I, think, I think we got three out of five, like I say. And, uh, yeah, we had a fun time with it. Um, absolutely, that's not bad for two people. Yeah, we smashed, we smashed through the first couple of puzzles pretty quick, actually. Yep. That's only being computer geeks, basically. <laughs> that, yeah, yeah. that got me. Well, uh, and, and if, we had, if we had more time, we could have done it. If, unfortunately, we did it the last run of the day, so we, we couldn't extend or whatever because everyone wanted to pack up and get the heck out of Dodge or Niagara Falls. Um, but if we had maybe another 15 minutes, I think we probably could have done it. We're getting close uh, to playing cards. We if, knew we, if we had another 15 minutes or if we had another person, yeah, even, even just one person, I think would have made a difference. I think so. Cause we would have found more stuff. The playing cards, I think was the most difficult puzzle because well, as, as well, sorry. Um, you and I kind of think alike. We do. So to have somebody else in the room, that doesn't think like us would have been uh, a plus to have somebody in there that can throw uh, an artistic view on something or recognize something from somewhere else. Would, oh, would exactly. Have been, would have been nice. But um, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, good segue. And, and it was what? I think it was 15 bucks or whatever. And it yeah. was, the, the proceeds went to uh, Children's Hospital. Of, Children's um, Hospital. Absolutely. Absolutely. Hospital. Yeah. Which so, is what the doctor who society was raising all their money for yeah. uh, this, this convention again. So, um, um, and that's why they're they're lovely, great people. They they do all their uh, kind work uh, and and things for the fans, but also to uh, to raise money for the children's charities. Yeah, um, let's talk about the Doc Two people, the Star Wars people, and all that, and yep, and how they kind of got the, banished from the, the, the floor one. this year. Oh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, normally. Um, the charity groups, we'll call them, uh, Star Wars, uh, Buffalo to New Turtles, 501, all that, get a small corner of the con to set up inside and get walk through traffic where they can, people take pictures and donate money to, like, to local charities and all that. Uh, this year, they were basically uh, moved outside around the corner near the Q&A rooms, which people don't often go to. And the inside, their area is filled up with more artists and uh, vendor tables. Um, so, uh, we talked to them and there was basically a significant, uh, drop in, in visitors and walk through traffic as well as space set up to, which was disappointing. Yeah. Um, but I think the cost of the con at Niagara Falls, uh, Niagara Falls Convention Center is going up. And, um, I think the organizers are trying to maximize their profit on the floor, getting more tables inside for sure. Uh, but yeah, look something up here quickly. Yeah, yeah the um, Doctor Who Society raised uh, two thousand nine hundred thirty-five dollars and eighty-six cents for McMaster Children's Hospital Foundation. Mm -hmm. So that was that was great. Um, could it have been better? Probably, um, but I think I I think they said it was a little bit down from last year. It but, was. Um, I think we can definitely count that or. or chalk that up to uh, positioning yeah he's got a spot inside and not in the parking lot yeah that's true Emmy. yep um <clears throat> yeah that's true like at least they're well, down with, by with, with these groups is they draw a lot of fans in yeah like the, the star wars stuff because people love to see all the star wars props they love the to star see wars, the star huge. wars yeah uh the speeder bikes and things like that and yep. to have your picture taken on a speeder bike to have your picture taken with Boba Fett, who do have your picture taken with yeah. Jabba the Hutt, um, with all the the um, the things that they've got out there, 
People love that stuff. And, and it's a draw. And it's a shame that uh, they were put where they were because they were put along the side and they were put beside the entrance uh, where the lines were just shoveling and funneling people through to get into the main convention floor. So a lot of people didn't stop there this year. No, they didn't. And their spot was given basically to take out by four artists, one who wasn't very fan engaging anyway. So I don't know why. Yeah. yeah. I know so, who you mean. I know who you mean too. He yeah. never engages with fans. He's always working with his heads down. Don't just don't 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 disturb me. Yeah. Yeah. So that was uh that was disappointing to see. Yeah. Uh so switching gears, uh vendor stuff's on the floor this year. Um, well, I, I want to go back to one more, uh, one more. Uh do you want to do artists first? The the comic artists. Yes, let's do the comic artists because I know yeah. you have some great well, we'll experiences. Kind of wrap around there, or whatever. Yeah. Um, we got to talk with um, Michael Golden, who uh, yeah. did some a lot of Marvel work, uh, Doctor Strange, and things like that. Star he Wars was, work. Got some of yeah. his prints hanging upstairs, which is which is awesome, awesomely wonderful. Yep, he was uh, he was a big fan of of us showing up there, and yeah, I don't think that a lot of people stop in and talk to a lot of these comic artists a lot no um, i don't think they do either they, and, and that could be because a lot of them do seem to just be working on stuff but i know there's one who is working on on his uh commission well not commissions but his, his actual job the book whatever book he's assigned to he's working on things for the next issue which is a little um a little perturbing. You don't want to. You don't want to interact or talk with that person. He doesn't want to talk or interact with you because he's basically doing his day job at a convention, which is a little more distracting. So I don't know why he does it. But yeah, uh, I, I I think that's the sort of guest that kind of puts uh, people off from seeing a lot of the other comic artists, and they see the comic artists doing work or whatever, and I think sometimes they assume that they're doing work for a book and don't want to be disturbed. A lot of times they're just sketching and doodling. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, actually, I stopped, I stopped and talked to a few. So uh, Mike Ruth, uh, who actually got to do uh, a couple of Swamp Thing comics for DC, he was sketching and doodling. Absolutely wonderful guy to engage with, yeah. basically just to, to shoot the breeze. Uh, his thing was basically was he always drew Swamp Thing, and one day he basically he got to actually draw for DC and do it. So that was like you know the best thing ever for him. So we decided to talk about that. Um, mentioned too basically that DC is nice because they pay right away and not take like months for like Marvel. <laughs> you mentioned that. <laughs> uh, talk to um, the filmation guy, he was pretty interesting. Oh, yeah, that was uh, Tim uh, Tom Cook. Yep, he yep. was there too. I didn't, I didn't actually speak to him, I just saw him basically. Yep, yep. Uh, I talked to Greg Highland who does all the Marvel zombie covers, mm -hmm. very laid back guy. And like I said, uh, I, I engage with him too if you have a chance. Yeah, but um, talk about Starenko. You had a really good Starenko, uh, Jim Starenko, who is not a comic book artist or doesn't no, doesn't doesn't think of himself as one. Even though he did comic books, he only did I think he said like thirty comic books. Wasn't many. It wasn't many in in like his career, which started in the uh, the late sixties mm -hmm. or, or mid sixties, probably. He he did thirty comic books and kind of. Um, got his his um, name known from that, I guess, in, in this in these circles. Um, but he um, <laughs> he had some stories and the woman who was running his table um, said that I hope you're not in a hurry because he likes to tell a story with every autograph he, he's not just gonna sign something for you he's going to talk to you about everything he's going to tell you he's going to give you basically an art lesson um inside of the the time that you're standing at his table for the autograph he would and he did he, oh, he yeah. went he went on and on and on and basically held uh, a class <laughs> for for lack of better terms about um everything oh. that he's done he, yeah. he told you the story behind um the the picture that you were looking at because he had a number of pictures on the table obviously for people to buy um 
he would tell you, and he, he, he asked questions. <laughs> he asked a lot of questions about um, what you thought the work meant and what you thought um, he was going for when he drew this. Uh, I'm just going to bring one up here. Yeah, and um, um, he basically, like, the more you listen, the more you learn. Like, I didn't know he yeah. was, he did a magic show. <laughs> He, he was an escape artist. He was an escape artist. And he, yeah. and he, he yeah. went on about that. And no word of a lie, he was a, a what an escape artist as well as an artist artist. Yeah. So, um, and it was nice to see him because he is an advanced age. Yeah. Yeah. Um, sorry, I'm just. No problem. Um, I was I was a little disappointed to stop talk to Dan Perrin this time. Yeah. Uh, I, I talked to him. We talked to him before. Uh, I, I'll switch the guy here. Yeah. There we go. He was talking about he before I even got there. He was talking to these people about this print for uh, fifteen minutes easily, and then it was another half hour that he finished talking about. It. He was talking about the way the phone is drawn, how the uh, the, the circles in in the dial are done. He's talking about the shadows. He's talking about the circles that he's done over here intentionally to mirror the circles over here and the circles in this. He's talking about the circle over here. He's talking about the lines coming or the, the light lines coming through the blinds. He's asking, what do you think the shadow in the um, back corner is uh, behind the door? Who, who is the person that has, has come in? Uh, is this person a detective? Is this person um, a uh, another killer? Is this person the intended victim is the person behind the door a bad guy or a good guy this is his he basically said he broke down the entire genre of noir with this picture and it was it was really something to see and, and to hear um let me just see if i can find the one that that he was talking to me about that really wasn't even what i wanted to talk to him about yeah <laughs> He just kind of grabbed this one. And yeah, here we go. And yeah, a lot of basically a lot of uh, old comic books and old books too that he had done. So if you're looking to get some um, Steranko work, original work, there's no shortage of it. That's for sure. And like it was pretty cool. And like I said, um, I talked to Dan Parent. He's the. I know, one of the major Arch, Archie artists. I didn't talk to him this year. Um, he's fun to talk to, and uh, he always encourages kids to draw and get into the game if they want to be an artist and all that. So it's always nice to see him there. Yeah, you got the magic. So a lot of people are going to um, know Starenko from his his comic book work, and he did a, a lot of work back in like the '60s, like I said, on the uh, the Nick Fury Agents of Shield uh, comic book, and this is like some of his iconic artwork from from yep. that absolutely that genre or from that that run. Um, what one of like the, the 30 that he did and stuff. Uh, the interior panels are, are even better than the cover, but that, that's just a, a famous cover that I remember. But he brought out this picture and asked the audience what it is. And he went on there. This is a, a six by eight panel. And he asked you what you thought this, this, picture was what was the story that was going on here and he he then didn't debunk you but he he enlightened you as to um what it meant i i had suggested at first it was like a uh 
a how-to lesson for a, a high school biology class on how to dissect frogs. He said, well, that's very interesting that you say that, but what it basically is, is this um, person on the operating room table who's dying, um, who looks a lot like a frog, as you can see. Uh, if you look at the uh, different panels, um, but then it goes to flashback where you can see um, him as a child catching these frogs and obsessed with frogs. And then you go to the balloons uh, for the, the respirators, which mimic the, um, the frogs lung sack. I don't know what part of frog that is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a biology student. Um, but he then went on about that and how this guy was kind of cruel to the frogs and how he dissected frogs and did all this stuff as well. Uh, and then it, how it mimics his dissecting of the frogs to being on the operating table. Uh, and then how it, it shows his death at the end, just like the frog is dead. Um, but then he said, because I, I had commented that I really liked the uh, the way the color was used and how you got that first column, which was kind of all black and white, and then it leads your eye to the next column, which has the introduction of color, uh, and so on and so on. He says, you can read this panel not just left to right from one, two, three, four, five, six. You can read it by the column, and it tells you this, a story. You can read it by the row, and it'll tell you a story. You can pick any square, he said, and read them in any direction and put them in any order you like, and it will tell you a different story every time. But you, well, it'll tell you, it'll tell you the story every time. And you might get to the destination a little bit differently. Uh, the presentation's a little different, but it, it's still essentially, excuse me, the same story every time. <laughs> And I had commented to his, his autograph or his, his uh, handler at the table um, when she mentioned that uh, he, he would ask questions and <laughs> there would be a test after, after his stories. I mentioned, boy, I hope there's no math. Well, there was math in this question. He asked us, how many ways could you read this story if there's 48 squares? How many different ways could you, you organize the squares to read the story? And one person in line said, oh, 365, one for each day of the year. It's like, no, that's a silly answer. And one person said, 1,000. And then he, he pointed to me, what do you think? Well, it's, it's been a long time since I've done math, but I believe the answer is 48 factorial. And he says, yes, there it is. The, what that is is 48 times 47 times 46 times 45 times 44 times 43, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, all the way down to one. So it's a... An, astronomical number um, of ways that you could permeate this story because for each one that you choose as your your starting uh, square you've got 47 more options for the next one and then after that you got 46 left so you have to multiply by that and etc 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 so it's an astronomical number but the fact that he could um, plan this and, and lay it out in such a, a remarkable way was was it was really fun to listen to him talk about that even though he did seem a little long in the tooth uh and did seem to like to uh fluff his own pillows a little bit and, and pump himself up when it came to a few <laughs> yeah of, that's true his works of art but you know what well deserved because he's got such a, a great catalog and he's got such um great style that um it was okay that he, he he's entitled to do that a little bit. Uh, then um, I got a, a picture signed. And mine is is downstairs hanging up, but uh, I got talking to him <laughs> because let me tell you he did like to talk um, about. the shadow because he did a number of covers for uh the shadow novels the uh the pulp novels uh, that were done 
And this is the picture I picked up because I thought it was a, a really cool picture. And mm -hmm. uh, well, it was also the, the biggest one that he'd done uh, or, or at least had uh, was offering there. Um, but he said that he um, talked with and dealt with Maxwell Grant, um, the pen name of the guy who did uh, the Shadow Novels, who uh, Maxwell Grant was um, actually uh, Walter, uh, Walter Gibson, um, who did the, the Shadow Novels um back in the day and and Storenko did all the covers for him and they were they were pretty incredible looking things but he told the story about how he got the the novels printed and how they got into press and and all he, he told you a story about every cover and it was was really cool um some people were getting a little frustrated with the the length of time it took him to do an autograph but um I think it was worth it because, again, not going to be around forever. And it, it's a great opportunity to learn and to hear some of the, the backstory to some of these, these works of art that we really like. Um, and, and he was a storyteller. He was a showman, which was, was really fun to, to experience. And if he comes back again in a couple of years, because this, I believe, is his second or third time to Niagara Falls. I want to say at least second for sure, maybe even three. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I would, I would go go talk to him again, just because it was fascinating. Um, he doesn't take uh, pictures at the table there. He doesn't take, let people take pictures of him. Um, fair enough, but it would be kind of cool to have him to, to have a picture with him. Um, but he probably would not be be lit properly and, and noirish enough if he it was just a full, uh, a selfie. Oh, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> is there any guess that you kind of like? Maybe I should have saw them. You know, I didn't talk to Jerry Mathers this year. I talked to him a few years ago uh, when he was there the last time. Uh, mm -hmm. I do kind of wish I had talked to him this time. Um, again, partially because. One, he's not going to be around forever. Um, two, uh, just to, to comment on Beaver Cleaver there, uh, as, as some of you know, I do have a grandson now, and they've named him Theodore. He just turned two, <laughs> so Theodore for, for Theodore Cleaver would be, I think he'd get a little kick out of that. Yeah, e exactly. He probably would have got a kick out of that. Yeah. Um, I thought basically I should have stopped saw Tom Arnold. I was on the fence. Yeah, um, yeah. We kind of yeah. ran out of time for him. Yeah, and money too, right? Because it wasn't cheap. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Didn't realize that they did support a camp for uh, children born with congenital heart, heart defects. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that, but you could buy a shirt for, what was it, reasonably priced shirt? I think six, it was like 30 60, bucks or something like that. 60 bucks. 60 bucks, okay, 60. Yep. And, and the proceeds went that, but you got a free autograph and a picture with him. Yeah, free autograph and a picture, but all the proceeds went to this camp for like that. Yeah. Uh, he, I heard from people that he was really cool. Mm -hmm. uh, he did, you know, he made no, he made no bones about his career. And, you know, even when they bought the stupids, that really stupid film, he mm -hmm. goes, yeah, I made it. I got paid for it. Yep. Uh, so be it kind of thing. <laughs> um, yeah, that's all I can think of from the guest point of view. Uh, vendors. Vendors. Um, I did not see much unique stuff this year. No, there wasn't. No, no. We did have some some pretty great uh, interactions with a few people. I mean, we got oh, wow. some old friends that we had seen there, like Melissa Proudlock, the uh, the paints with wine, um, yep. who does fantastic work. Uh, she always gets a, a good booth right down by the horror section, so it's a nice intersection for her and all that. Um. There's that, uh, you know, I just had the friggin' um, my floor panel for this year, too. Yeah. Anyways, uh, but yeah, the, the we, we know where's a paint with paint with a wine uh, a person, right? Yep. Um, let's see here, floor plan. Mm, it's exactly what it was here. Good thing is I got the floor pan memorized, so I know exactly where she was sitting. Uh, <laughs> 8 to 13. Painted with wine, go figure. Yeah. Based, out of, based yeah. out of the uh, Niagara area. Yeah. Uh, uh, she's always fun. 
as at h6, I think. The vault. Hmm. Um, I think that was them. That was that uh, wonderful horror couple who did really kind of like uh, gruesome dark landscapes. Yep. And um, and like as you picked the idea of doing a, an album an album cover basically for them. Yeah, yeah. I think we we uh, should charge for royalties next year for the ideas that we uh, we gave to people. Yep. Or, or I um, gave to people. I, I've given the stuff away for free. <laughs> yeah, we we go enough times we start so we start to see some of the same vendors, so we become good friends with them. So those two, uh, we know quite well. But there was nothing this year because it struck me as unique. Tons of Funko Pops, tons of mystery boxes, uh, way too many Funko Pops in my opinion. Um, even the handmade crafts were kind of being repetitive. The same headbands, the same uh, you know purses and stuff like that. It wasn't a lot of a lot of uniqueness that I I really found anything really worth bringing home actually, yeah. Um, like nothing really jumped out basically as unique. I like to find something unique and bring it home, and, and nothing really kind of uh, you know really grabbed me as like ooh that's uh, that's really something cool. Um, I did I did see two booths selling other people's art. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it wasn't their art. They're selling their their art. Um, even that uh, backlit uh, neon art with the the yeah, or that, whatever. that was not original art. It was stolen from the internet because I, I I've stolen some of those art myself, basically. <laughs> um, so, like I said, disappointing on the vendor side a bit, but um, it is what it is. Um, a lot of the collectible stuff was off the charts, bonkers, insane. Um, yeah, I collect, well, I collect, well, yeah, I collect, always is. yeah. Well, I collect non sport sport non sport trading cards. I know the value of a box and a pack. One guy was looking for 200 bucks for a dinosaur attacks box. I bought that for 10 bucks off of eBay last year. It's not worth 250, dude. So, <laughs> uh, but you really had, again, it's like going to a flea market or whatever kind of, you know, your prices. I did see some Star Trek, some Star Wars figures I thought I might have, I might have jumped on. There were some packs I thought that might, I might have been interested in, but really, I didn't see anything that's like, wow, this is something unique. I want to showcase. And, you know, coming to the con was worth it, basically. Um, no, that really. Like I said, new I see because we see the spray the spray paint guy, the three minute spray paint paintings. We we own a couple because they're fantastic. Yep. And the paint the wine, but I always look for something new, something to showcase. I didn't see well, anything. I picked up from from painted with wine from uh, mm. Melissa. There, I picked up this, yep. not in this frame because she she had uh, done a big thing on her Instagram about how she had created this work, and um, <laughs> was torn about selling it in the frame, but she did sell it in the frame for for a a pretty penny, I'm sure. Um, but she was kind of heartbroken about seeing the frame go because she put a lot of work into aging and doing the frame. Yep. Um, <laughs> but I, I picked it up as a print because I thought it was a really, really cool uh, headless horseman picture. These are all and shades of wine. All done with wine. Yep. All done with, with shades of wine, basically. And uh, uh, like I said, she does a lot of, of pop and horror stuff that's really well done. Yep. Yeah. But like I said, we had... Yeah, um, check, out, uh, check her out there on Instagram. You can see her work. Yeah. Uh, and I threw a link up to her website there. Uh, if you're ever interested in some of the stuff, she does sell her prints and all that stuff. Well, we had basically like, you know, the sausage guys there. There were three people selling swords, edged weapons. Yep. Awesome guys. <laughs> Lots of Lego minifigures to be had. Yep. Uh, but again, nothing really stood out. I was like, wow, this is really kind of cool. So, um, yeah. Uh, cosplay. There was a lot of that. Hmm. I didn't think there was as much as I would expect it to be. I didn't feel like I washed in it. Um, no, it it's it almost seemed. You're right. Like there was a, a little bit less of it this year than um than in the mm -hmm. past. Yep. Um, some of the the big characters that we had kind of thought would be there uh, were not. Um, thinking that there'd be a lot more. Um, Spider-Man, thinking there would be a yes. lot more um, of of a lot of things. Well, um, I, I was looking for a scream from Ghostface. I yeah. Ghostface from Scream. Yeah, none. Um, usually, you get well. We saw a couple of Michaels because they were uh, Michael horror actors there, so that made sense. Myers, yeah. Um, I always see Harley Quinns. I always see Jokers, but not in the volume that we're not really part of me to see them. Actually, no, no. Um, there weren't really. Yeah. No. Um, yeah, I was kind of surprised. Like, nothing really, really stood out. I was like, oh, this is really cool. Uh, 
we did see the new Star Trek from Strange New World. Someone did actually do those uniforms, which was quite well done. And yep. uh, the one guy, one guy did Mad Max and his baited Lord Humongous with basically his <laughs> ass hanging out. And the next day he shaved his beard. Well, first he did Bully Bitch from the Boys one day. He shaved his beard off for Saturday and did Mad Max. And then he came back as a as one of the guys from V, the old you know lizard alien anime, uh, um, sci-fi series. Yeah. Uh, so we did see some some clever cosplays. I saw uh, one of those clickers from The Last of Us, which I thought was really good. Um, and we saw the family there, like you said, a lot of Spider Man. The family that was Doc Ock, Sandman. Yeah. And, uh, oh, the they were they were they were really well done and, and mm-hmm. really really cool. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, surprisingly, we didn't see like usually we see a lot of cosplay, and I'm surprised. Like usually you're watching cosplay, you can't. You know, I can usually felt my camera roll seeing it, and this year I did not. I I did feel like there was basically um, a drop in cosplay. Yeah, yeah. For I don't know why. I I really couldn't tell you why. Uh, I much. I think basically the drop in guests basically uh, did lead yeah. a drop to cosplayers themselves. Basically, yeah, yeah. Like they, uh, um, <laughs> if if the person you're there to see isn't around, you're not going to really. No, well, I'm not going to wear my um, Bret Hart costume because Bret Hart won't be here. If Matthew Lewis was there, we would have seen a lot more, um, uh, a lot more Harry Potter stuff. Yep. Uh, like I said, didn't see, didn't see a lot of that Star Wars stuff. I saw a few, you know, Boba Fett's. Yeah. Custom Boba Fett's walking around. There's always but, Boba Fett's. Uh, yeah. There's always Boba Fett's. Always Boba Fett's. Always Joker's. Always Spider Man's. Always Harley, Harley Quinn's. Yep. But there, there weren't that many Spider Man this year. No, there were not. Yeah. Yep. So the popularity of Spider, you know, the Spider, the Spider Verse and stuff like that, I was surprised. Yep. And of course, no Doctor Who, no surprise there. Yeah. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> that, those those are pretty few and and um and uh far oh, there, there was actually there was the um oh scratch that um, yes robot of death there yeah there was there was Victor doing the, the robot of death uh mm-hmm. there was also the um vintage Cyberman yes um, on the on the first day there we're talking old or, no, sorry, that was on Sunday yeah talking old school old school Spider Man old yeah. school uh, uh Cyberman but yeah um. I was a little surprised because I thought there'd be more, but you know, and you know what? I did not see a lot of horror cosplay. Usually you see a lot of horror cosplay. I did not see a lot of it this year. No, there wasn't. Uh, there was that uh, one really cool pinhead. Yes, she was excellent. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, very well done, basically. Yeah. Like I said, I saw a couple of Michaels. They had a Michael actor there. No Jasons. Um, no Freddies. Yeah. So. No, you, you there were a lot of the uh, um, girls in the the Camp Crystal Lake, um, yeah, shirts or, yep. or jerseys or whatever you want to call them. Um, and I and I saw a few animes, which I couldn't really recall what they were, but I, I saw a few animes. Yeah, <laughs> actually, I saw a yeah, few that, ones that, that that's more your your thing than mine. Well, I saw uh, two Kakagurus. I saw a couple Attack on Titans. Uh, what was that one that everybody plays? Uh, Gershon Impact. I don't play the game, but that was really popular. Uh, some I couldn't even place, basically. Oh, and there was a couple, fur- cur- couple furries there, too. Uh, but again, very interesting. That was not like a lot of cosplay. and not a, like, like I said, pre-COVID, we would have a lot of cosplay, a lot of unique cosplay. Um, yeah. yeah. Like I said, uh, yeah. very impressed. Yeah. Uh, other thing I saw this year, which well, let's see. I was to say about basically the the vendors. They're friendly, but like I said, yeah. just just not yeah. the um. Yeah, uh, like I said, I I, I didn't see anything in Artist Alley. The wasn't there. No, and usually I find something in Artist Alley. I didn't find anything in Artist Alley to buy this year. Yeah, yeah, and that um, and that's really a big thing for you. I know. I like to find either a print or something either for myself or my daughters to bring home. And nothing really stuck out as like, yeah, this is really cool. I, I got to see this is the one that I need. Yeah. yeah, or or unique. I say it unique and and um and stand out. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah. and there's uh some some anomalies like the uh, the leaf gutter guard people were there with the booth. So if you go to Comic Con, yeah, worry there, about there, your gutters. Yeah, yeah, the things that you don't think really <laughs> belong. Yeah. Like uh, I I don't know why they um. They had that. You're right. Yeah, the uh, the smoked meat uh, people were there, which is always funny. Yeah, uh, I kind of get that one though. 
Um, I know. When I'm walking around, I want to, I got a hankering for basically an arm of salami. Just because of the the whole, um, <laughs> you're trapped and you want to have something oh. to eat while you're out there. We can segue to that after after that. Um, <laughs> yeah. So let's talk about food and drink because since it's controlled by the convention center, the security is really strict. There is no outside food or drink allowed in. Period. Yeah. You can you can you can smuggle stuff in. It was I wasn't hard to put in your pants and all that. Like you know, granola bars. <laughs> is um, that where you, you got the salami from? <laughs> yeah, I wish. <laughs> but um, <duh. laughs> uh, but inside you're forced to buy con food, and it was eight dollars for a hot dog. Yeah, no hot dogs worth eight dollars. Wow. It was uh fifteen dollars for a sub, and I forget what basically pop and water going for. I basically said screw it. They had a. Um, uh, a wild builds homemade soda stand set up. I bought a big insulated cup and basically got free refills all day from it just because, because uh, apart from that, you either, either you either eat the eight dollar hot dog or eat beer nuts. Yeah, hmm. yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so there, there were some pretty cool cosplays there. Yep. I mean, we did our, did our dear friends, some trailer park boys. Um, we, we did get to see. Some Harry Potter in there. Like I said, man, I just defaulted. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. There, there was the Spider Man family. Well, that was excellent. A, a really, really good job. On, on I was, very, I was very impressed Sandman by that. And the kid is, is Doc Ock, and and the wingspan on on Mom there as Vulture was incredible. It was greatly incredible. Yeah, like those took those were were costumes that took work. I know that wizard. <laughs> Thanks, Bernie. <laughs> I'll work on a better one for next year. The problem is when I travel down, I don't think I can bring a whole Doc Ock uh, suitcase. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, um, like I said, so the ones that we did there see... There were other wizards work. there too. Yes. Someone's got the beard. <laughs> pulling it off as usual. I, I, I taped your arms up with um, with the electrical tape to give you the, the band, so yeah. that's, that's yeah. my contribution. <laughs> uh, I saw three Scarlet Witches. Oh, Classic cool. Master. Classic yeah. Master. Yeah. And, and yeah, that that's... Uh... Cyber Commander, I believe, is his uh, handle on uh, okay. Instagram. But okay. uh, he does uh, a lot of Doctor Who cosplay stuff, and, and is a, a really cool guy and a great fan. A yeah. lot of a lot of classic, like a lot of like you don't see yeah. that stuff. <laughs> like I tell you, you're no. not going to see that. No, no, no one's going to whip out the robot of death, basically, and said, "Yeah, here yeah. we go," kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. But yeah, um, like I said, one thing about do for next year, but yeah, um, yeah. Well, that's about the con. Oh, we, we caught a Q&A with Trish and Lita. Yep. yep. It was all right. Uh, it was um, surprising to me for how big their lines were, how underattended the um, Q&A was. If there's 20 people in there, I'd be surprised. I, I would say there were probably 30. 30? Yeah, it wasn't, but, wasn't very full. But, but people left partway through. Yeah, um, I, I saw that. Yeah. Um, Q&A is always hit and miss. Now it depends on the presenter and, and, and all that. I noticed Trish did a lot of talking. Lita didn't have really much to say and all that. And um, Well, at the same time, I think the fans were the more there for, the, for Trish. Yeah, absolutely. And, and they kind of knew that. And um, all, most of the questions were geared towards Trish anyway. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, what else can we say about the con? Are we going back next year? Yeah, we are. Yeah. We are because basically it's convenient. Like we talk about going to the Fan Expo. It's not just convenient, but it is still fun. Yeah. Like yeah. we talk about Fan Expo, but still that's me and Switzerland got up there, find parking yep. and um, all that, and then drive back. At least we're only like 50 minutes from home base, basically. Yeah. We will go back. Um, I will be paying attention to the guests. So like I said, I think Niagara Falls is in the twilight of their heyday. Um, they need to get back to, um, well, okay. Let's step, let's step back a minute. They, let's have a need, segment on improvements. Name us some okay. improvements. All right. They, they need some better guests. Absolutely. First off, we, we can all agree, uh, and they will agree as well, and I believe they have on their, their Instagram or their Facebook or whatever, that they need to improve the organization. They need to improve the lineup system. Mm -hmm. They need to improve the admission system uh, and the ticketing and all that. Yeah. They, uh, they, they know that. And, and those are no-brainers. Exactly. Um, those are things that um, they need to address. As well, they need to address the um, 
how do I put this politely, the skill or talent level of their volunteers. Uh, I saw yeah. some complaining that the volunteers could not answer simple questions. Um, a lot of times you would want to know how much somebody's autograph was. And the person was volunteer, the volunteer was there to organize the line and keep everything going flowing smoothly, but didn't know what the price at the end of the line was going to be. So it was on the table. That, that's your first point of contact. You want to be able to ask that person, hey, is this the line for so and so? What do I need to do? How much is it? Where should I stand? Guide me. Yeah. You're you're the one that works here. So for the volunteers, they need more training. And I think that's one big thing. I think the other thing too, they need a volunteer captain that's nearby checking in on them. Because yeah. a lot of these basically are rookie volunteers. And a lot oh, of the guests are their, their kids. And they're really and the they're, guests are very belligerent. 14 to yep. to 18 year old kids, yep. I would say, uh, on average. Yep. So having yeah. a, an experienced volunteer or staff member nearby would have helped a lot, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Uh yeah. Flow of traffic in. And having uh, various options to buy tickets, absolutely. Yep. Um, I think if they pull that stunt again next year where they have bad entry and not enough uh, so over, over so the con, uh, Niagara Falls is done. Mm -hmm. They watch decline basically and attendance easily from that point forward. Uh, the other thing, Yogi like I said, Barra, is yes. Yogi Berra used to say, no one goes there anymore, it's too crowded. Yep. Which is a classic Yogiism. But in this case, people will stop going because it's too crowded. And, and the guests aren't I, there. Well, I, I think that the frustration of the crowds and lineups will be more to push people away than poor um, celebrity turnout. You have to get someone to really drag someone's butt in there to see it. Um, like, for example, Ottawa announced right now for September they're bringing Christopher Eccleston, Doctor Number 9. That's yeah, a huge talk, win. We, we, we got to talk about that. But what, uh, <laughs> when, when is this? I think it's the week the, the weekend I leave for my cruise. Like you son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> maybe he'll be there on a Friday so I can slip in and get him quick. Oh, no, he's there Saturday. Saturday, uh, Sunday, I think it said. I, I checked it. I'll, I'll have to check. I mean, do we have to get one of your kids to go there to give me an autograph? Or do I have to like truck up to Ottawa for it? Well, the other thing too, I bet you could try and, to be and who who would who would be most willing to go? Drea. Drea? <laughs> it's no quite I know exactly. Yeah. yeah. Will, um, will she will she uh, live stream it like I did with your? Uh, oh yeah. my god! <laughs> your well, the, the other thing too about Exxon, I bet you it'll be one hundred sixty dollars. So I don't know if it's even worth going. Oh, yeah. yeah, exactly. Uh, but for Niagara Falls, Niagara Falls Comic Con, there's a there's a formula: Doctor Who, Star Trek, Star Wars, wrestling, horror. That's well, they, what you got to get. They, that's what they should do. That's, what that's they should not do. the formula they stick to. The formula yeah. they stick to is um, available, hopefully um affordable hopefully um recognizable and they do try to tick the boxes for um those things but they don't they they've missed the doctor who guest and, and this year i don't blame them this year they they actually had one uh but he canceled due to work uh, and it's apparently rescheduled for the uh frightmare in the falls in october I'm, I'm still, um, I'm still tipped they couldn't get like a, a second string companion or something on a short. Well, was, come on, it, it, it might have been a little too late to do that once he announced his cancellation. So I'll, I'll give them a pass on that one. But for the Star Wars, Oof. um, they didn't even try. Well, and, they had, they had Star Trek. Well, they, they had Giancarlo again, but they had. Yeah. I don't think of him as a Star Wars. No figurehead or or no, no, no. because he's only done star wars in the last four years and Is he's that how long long yeah. mandalorian's been on and if you want to get out of star wars for one ten out of him that's not like they did have two others to the others scheduled but cancel repeatedly they were no they were no they're known they're known cancelers so again they struck out on star wars doctor who how many years I have been down star wars fans absolutely i know a lot star, of people were star trek they had john delancey but he canceled yep yep Okay, understandable. It happens, but they didn't replace him, and he would no. have been a good Star Trek guest. Perfect for this time for uh, the stuff like that, like what was yeah. going on TV. Yeah, but um, then they they focus more on the horror guests, and they focus more on the pop uh, culture. Well, the old guests, the classic TV guests that mm -hmm. a lot of these people don't understand or know, like yeah. 
as we said, um, who who knew who Leave It to Beaver was? Yeah. Never saw it. Never saw it. <laughs> yeah. Who uh, who knew who really is William Daniels a draw? I was going to say, and, he, and he might be, but is his wife a draw? His wife was there, who was also on Saint Elsewhere with him. Is she a draw for? And anybody? Mother of the Lost the Prairie. She's a she's a bonus plus one, basically. Yeah. Um, I was just disappointed, basically, that when the Lancey canceled, say, "Here we got William Daniels." Like, what's well, kind of a downgrade, guys? Can't you? Yeah. You know. Could, so, could you at least get me another Star Trek guest? Exactly. Get me, get me Chief O'Brien. Get me um, Doctor Bashir. Get me um, anybody. Anybody, someone who was a, a minor, minor character, even. Mother the complaint too is they had a great load of guests announced for the 10th anniversary, including um Matthew Lillard, Shaggy yep. from Scooby Doo, and yep. all that. And they never brought him back. And I am really kind of like, come on, guys, like that's yep. that can be done. So we also had Sylvester McCoy announced for that one. He has not come back. No. Um, I, I kind of understand that one as well, though, because he is He's getting, getting older. Older and international travel might be a little bit of a strain on him. Um, well, like I said, and, Comic and he yeah. was there before, so yeah. Comic Con needs to see there. him, which is, is good for us. Yeah. Unfortunate for people who didn't get to see him, but I understand that one because, yeah, it, it could be a little difficult for him to travel now. And and even with with um COVID, COVID is still not not vanished yeah. exactly. Um, so. He is 79 years old. I could see him being a little gun shy about being around crowds uh, and being in this this environment. Oh, absolutely. And, and yeah. fair enough. But but bottom line, they got to improve the guests. Like the, like yeah. this year was definitely a miss. It was definitely a hard miss. Yeah. And, they um, they um the same people who run this one do uh frightmare in the falls which is a horror convention they do in october and, and they've started announcing guests for that um definitely more horror themed Corey got Feldman. craig david dowsett who was winnie the pooh in blood and honey i guess uh lisa langua uh from class of 1984 uh kimberly beck friday the 13th final chapter eric anderson friday the 13th final chapter carrie moore and camilla moore friday the 13th final chapter Deep Roy, the leprechaun stunt performer, will be there. Ooh. Uh, now, now you're getting the actual some celebrities here. You've got, I'm sorry to the other people, I don't know who you are, so I, I have a hard time calling you a celebrity. They've got Christy Swanson, mm -hmm. the uh, yeah. original Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Yes, uh, from the Good movie. Pick. They've got Corey Feldman announced from Friday the 13th Final Chapter. He won't show. Don't hold your breath. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and they've got Ron Perlman from Hellboy and Doug Jones from Hellboy. Announced. Two huge Which, picks. Those are those yeah. are really good guests. Yeah, for and um, I I think I'm gonna go this year. I don't. I've never done the frightmare really. Well, let me know uh, how I'm it is. Man, if you do go, but um, if you remember Mike and Andrew, the guys we talked to there, um, Mike is a well, they're both big horror fans, but uh, the one of them is moving away, um, and this will kind of be like the the last hurrah to hang out with him. So, I think we're gonna go, probably go with him there just to, okay. to see it. Uh, yeah, later on it is because uh, Serena's making yep. Serena's making noise about going to see it because she's a huge horror fan, yep. and I oh, think she wants to come on down. She knows you know where the couch is. I know, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And and I and I think that quality guess is better because it's horror, right? So I can focus on it. But like I said, uh, when when you're you're doing yourself or marketing yourself as a comic convention or even a pop culture convention, you need to paint with a wider brush. You yes. need to not just do horror. Uh, and here you can though, which is fine. Exactly. So, yep. uh, better entry, better guests. It'll um, be smaller too, right? So yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yep. But uh, although I, I think the ticket prices are about the same. Um, oh, really? The Friday pass ticket. Whoops. Considering it's a smaller, uh, smaller con, a smaller guest list. Yeah. Uh, for Friday, it costs um, twenty three ninety five, so twenty four dollars. Okay, not bad. 
Saturday is forty dollars, thirty nine ninety five. Okay. Uh, Sunday is thirty two dollars, thirty one ninety five. Saturday, Saturday was seventy for Niagara Falls Comic Con. Uh, the deluxe pass is seventy dollars. So we'll get the deluxe pass going three days. days. Yeah. 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 It's so like I said, it, it come out ahead. Um, the, the VIP is two hundred and ten dollars. Again, that's that special speedy entrance and stuff it, like that. Yeah, T-shirt and stuff. Well, yeah, okay. that's uh, admission to the event thirty minutes before the general public uh, on both days. It should say all three. Step up here, guys. Proofread. Uh, front of the line access to all autograph sessions, photo ops, and Q and A panels. VIP T-shirt, tote bag, and beanie. Beanie oh. for for us old folks is a toque. It's a toque, yeah. 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 No special yeah, interest then. Schedule to be uh, subject to change. Okay. Oh, your special ad admission is you get in there 30 minutes before. Okay. Well, that. Yeah. Well, like, yeah. like you said, though, it's a smaller con, too, right? Yeah. Yeah. Really, I don't think there's a whole lot of need to uh, jump the line on this one. Um, but Makes again, sense. Well, some of the lines for the celebrities are going to be big. They always are. Yeah. But like, per Perlman's will have, will have a big line for sure. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm going to go to this one because I, I did not get an autograph with um, Doug Jones last time. Yeah. And that's a good choice. He, yeah, he we'll did comment that I had the, the I commented that he was the best dressed person at the convention. He commented that I had the best mustache at the yeah. convention. So but, <laughs> well, yeah, but we'll be back to Niagara Falls Comic Con. There's no question. Oh, yeah. Like I said, cons like part of that. Like hanging out with you is the other other great uh yeah. Yeah. the other great uh thing. But um I'll be watching Niagara Falls Con closely to see if make any changes or not. Uh like I said though, um I, I think they need to make some changes, yes. They do. And the other challenge they have too is they're stuck at the convention center. They can't change venues. There's no other venue in Niagara Falls that can probably support them. No, uh, there's no other venue in Niagara Falls that is big enough to accommodate them. No. Um, the only thing they could do would be maybe, maybe the arena. But yeah, I feel like I probably feel like a step back. I think. Yeah. Yeah. It would. Yeah. Well, it doesn't have the the, um, the seating areas and all that stuff. That no. the, uh, the convention center is for the uh, the panels and things like that. And even the large hotels using those ballrooms. There's enough ballrooms in those hotels down Niagara Falls, even though it is the tourist area. Yeah. So, yeah. like I said, it kind of sucks, but like I said, I think they're battling the cost of the convention center itself. That's another huge factor that they're, they're probably going to be yeah. You know, yeah. trying to overcome. Well, Switz, any other final thoughts? Um, not really. I mean, I think that that covers everything we needed to say about mm -hmm. Niagara Falls Comic Con. Um, I, I, yeah, I'd say, folks. Um, like I say, even though we are kind of critical of the con, is because that we enjoy going so much. And yeah. I go all the way down from Ottawa to this con because it is a smaller, more intimate con. So you can get basically the guest experience. You can actually go up and just talk to guests without having to buy anything, usually, uh, which is something you don't get to do at other cons and all that. And um, like I said, I just like if, you, if you're dipping your toes into the con circuit, um, these smaller cons like Air Falls is a good way to do it. Hamilton the Commons Con is also another good one, too. That's small. Very so, small. Yeah. If you're looking for a local small con, trek, look, look around, check it out, see, what, see what's available. Yeah, Ottawa's yeah. pretty big. Ottawa's if pretty if you want to get into the convention stuff, you don't have to go to the biggest. Oh. No, no, you don't. You, 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 and I would not recommend starting with the biggest uh, as your first convention. Start with a small no. one around yeah. your, around your area, around your home base. Yeah, there, there's uh, uh, Jones, and and he loved my mustache. Uh, yeah, he, he did. <laughs> Very nice man. I, uh, super nice guy. Super yeah. nice guy. Um, I just talked to him just because basically and told me I liked his work and all that. And I thought he was the main reason to watch this Star Trek discovery. And I enjoy his character's uh, plot um, story arc. And I'm looking forward to what's happening next. Cause I don't know what's going to happen. He goes, neither do I. Isn't it exciting? He said, so, <laughs> so anyways, like I said, if you got anywhere, if you got any con questions, hit us up on social media. We'll be more than happy to answer them. We're old veterans about it. Yep. Um, um, at the, at the tail end of your stream there, you were talking about uh, Indiana Jones and a few other things there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. and and you see, you saw the Flash movie. Oh yeah, I did. Yep, yep, yep. Sorry, uh, should I be sorry that you saw it? I don't know. I took a chance on it. I thought maybe yep. Michael Keaton could actually lift it up, make it entertaining. Yeah, I swear to God, it's like they put him on 
this did, platform. Did, did they just and the guy pull goes, all the best lines from Batman 89. Yeah, so just okay. Say that. Say that. And say that. And cut. Say print. the line. Say the line. Yeah. Come on. It, I did it, it. It just like Jesus. Why are you doing that? Yeah, I wrote a whole article on it on my Kofi page, on the Kofi page, basically. But you could have replaced Ezra Miller with anybody, and and still had probably a better film. The writing was was choppy. Um, yep. Michael Keaton was wasted. Um, the effects were kind of kind of off. Um, would yeah. you recommend just watching Birdman and again instead of? Uh, this I one would for, for the Flash Keaton. TV series. Um, the only shining part for me basically was Supergirl. I thought uh, the actress that played her was amazing. And I like her take on the character. As far and... as I know, she's the only one doing any any uh, media stuff on the movie. I don't know oh. if Michael Keaton is or not. Not really, no. Un- unfortunately for this movie, it's it's going to bomb. They've yep. kind of already accepted this, which puts a lot of the future of the DCU, now, now the DCU, not the DCEU, in, in question. Makes a lot of people wonder what James Gunn is inheriting and what the fan loyalty will be. Um, some of this film's bombings are not its own fault. Uh, first off, they should have they should probably have replaced Ezra Miller. They no, should no not question. hitch their their um, their ride to Ezra Miller there because um, it's just problematic. Um, another thing that that's kind of hurting them that's a little bit out of their control is the Writers Guild strike, because there's no late night talk shows on, so you can't have your your stars and celebrities going on to the talk show circuit onto uh, Colbert or Kimmel or um, the other one, Fallon, um, to to pump your movie up and show the clips, um, because <laughs> they're just not available right now, which is is unfortunate because that one's out of their control. But they can still do press junkets and all that, and they didn't do press junkets. They just no, no, because I think they're they're afraid of the Ezra Miller fallout factor. Exactly, they just get them under the. But the whole point is point is because this movie is one and done. James Gunn has has basically ejected this character and this storyline from his universe. It, yeah, and, and that's the other thing that all the fans know that that it's basically everything that James Gunn is going to do is a reboot. So all this stuff doesn't really matter. You can just push it off to the side. We don't need this stuff anymore. Just get rid of it, because you don't have to. You don't have to pay attention to this. You don't have to remember it for the next movies we come up with. This this will not be in Blue Beetle at all. Don't worry. Yeah, like I said, I, I did. I, I did enjoy some parts of the film, but overall, basically, it, it did not you, resonate you, you with me. You should because uh, obviously people worked hard on this to to make as good a movie as they could, and they they probably believed in their heart of hearts that they were doing a good job in making a good movie and. Even the worst movie will have something redeeming in it, or should. Oh yeah, that, that you will find enjoyable, or at least I always look for that part in a movie. Oh, I do too, and like I yeah. remind people too is like this is just my opinion, and I'm a bit yeah. of a movie snob. Yeah. Um, so, like I said, it was not my kind of film. I was I was quite disappointed. I was hoping for like I said, it's a little bit of Keaton magic. Yeah. Um, but it, he was wasted, and that that's yeah. what really kills me. Yep. Yeah. What about uh, Indy 5? I, I want to see it. I, I think it looks kind of oh, like fun. I'm going to see it. I don't care how cheesy or bad it's going to be because it can't be cheesier or worse than Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, in my opinion. Oh, my friend. I think it will be. I don't think so. I think it, I think that, that Harrison Ford, we know Harrison Ford loves this character, and we know that he... I assume that he wants to go out on top and go out having a good movie under his belt for the, for Indy's last hurrah. And oh. he, he knows that Crystal Skull was not that movie. And to do justice to one of, of his characters, to one of his roles, uh, he wants to go out like this. I mean, it's not like he's going to come back and get stabbed through the stomach with a lightsaber twice. No. Is uh... it? No, like I said, this thing's DOA. <laughs> this movie, this movie will not be good. I'll try and just enjoy what I can. I'm fully expecting to be Crystal Skull uh, two. Well, this is directed by James Mangold, isn't it? Guy who did yeah. Logan. I, I think that it could do. I think it'll do better. It'll definitely do. I will definitely enjoy this more than I enjoyed Crystal Skull. 
I I'm gonna hold I want to hold reservation on that because I think as good as as uh, Mangold is and he's got four writers with him, it's gonna create a convoluted story. I think Disney's got their claws all over this film, mm. and they're and they've got their uh, marketing marketing people and uh, bean counters, and um, you, you know, know what? They, uh, if they really do, if they really want to make money off of this movie, if they really have their bean counters and they want to hitch their wagon to this and make a lot of cash off this. Where's my Happy Meal toys? Uh, I, want, this... I want a Happy Meal toy for some of these more more these movies that are aimed at adults. I want uh, for, for like the, the, what's the rating on this one? Is it PG thirteen? Or is it PG? Um, I haven't seen it yet. I imagine it's just PG. So that that says to me it's still a family film, and a family can go out and enjoy this with uh, mom, dad, the kids, whatever oh, yeah. age the kids are. Um, you you can appeal to that demographic, that age group, or whatever. So why not give them a Happy Meal toy? Give me something to collect, and and that could also really help with the nostalgia fans like like you and me, who we're a sucker for Happy Meal toys. We know it. If, uh, if they if they had if they had a a fertility idol or whatever, if they had one of these things in a Happy Meal toy, tell me you wouldn't be going to McDonald's every day to get all the pieces you need to collect everything else. I would, you but that's never, that's, that's never going to happen again because Disney has basically just yeah. in McDonald's in the mid two thousands, yep. saying that the the license was uh, un- unprofitable. Yeah. Uh, the other factor now is that you will not find plastic in Canadian Happy Meal toys. You're going to get stupid cardboard crap. Ah, jeez. Yeah, we we we've been getting stuff lately for our ne- nieces and nephews, yep. and we got a few stuffed things. Everything else is cardboard. It's horrible. Um, however. The states would be a possibility, but um, yeah. uh, Disney, I, I Disney fully is, accept that they might not do it up here. Yeah, Disney has pulled in the licensing for stuff like that, which I don't understand. Uh, you know what I did see though? This is going to be funny. I did not see uh, Dow Disney uh, merchandise, but I have seen Classic Raiders merchandise at Toys R Us. They brought back the little figures yep. and put them on the shelf. They made a few little tiny horse play sets and all that. For Raiders of Lost Ark, not at this new stuff, basically. Yeah. And um, but yeah, I, I have a lot of faith in this film. I'll see it, but I I there's just like I said, there's just some magic missing from it. I can just I can just feel it already, basically. I'm gonna go see it and I'm gonna enjoy it. I don't care. We'll <laughs> I'm, gonna, what happens. I'm gonna enjoy it whether I like it or not. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, I think there's a bit of magic missing from it. But I do notice well, that yeah, the, um, you know what the magic is. It's called Harrison Ford is in his eighties. <laughs> you need you need uh, you need Spielberg involved somehow. That's the problem. He, he's eighty years old, so you need some of that Spielberg magic. I'll throw you the whip. You throw me the walker. Yeah, could, could, could be a line in the movie. Um, you know what? Let me just look, run down the upcoming movies really quick here. Um, yep. Uh, Oppenheimer, I'll wait for streaming to see um, stuff being blown up. That, that doesn't seem like a um, tentpole um, blockbuster summer must see for me. Do you know there's a Wonka yeah. film coming out? A which? Wonka film, it's called. Oh, okay. I did yeah. not know that. Yep. did not know that. Yep. Um, when when does uh, Aquaman 2 come out? Is that this year or next year? Uh, this year. I'm looking up right okay, now for so you. Again, who cares because it's going to be blitzed by by James Gunn's reboot. Yeah, exactly. So no one so the although in, I really did enjoy the first one. The first one was actually an above average DC film. Yep. Uh Aquaman comes out December 20th. Oh. Yeah. So again, uh Dune 2 which will be a skip. Too. Yeah. Uh Barbie which girls want to see. When, uh, when does that one come out? Which one? Dune or Barbie? Uh, Barbie. Soon actually. Um let's see here. Uh, July twentieth. That's that's that, late summer. That could be fun. Yeah. Uh, you get Mission Impossible Part One. Uh, say what you want about Tom part Cruise. One? Well, Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part One. Oh wow. Uh, say what you want about Tom Cruise. His Mission Impossible films. They he, they know their audience. I watch them. Yep. No, um, not nearly as fun as the TV show. Yeah. The Expendables Four is also due out this year. Well, they kind of need some of these things to get people back in the theaters again. Yeah. Um, they are, I think people are experiencing a bit of superhero fatigue. Absolutely. Um, 
Because who wants to talk about the same thing over again? By the way, did you hear about the Hunger Games prequel coming out? But I'm da. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but we'll see. But the moving things, uh, the movie going audience has changed. But there's a lot of stuff that I didn't really hear about. Like I said, on radar, like Wonka. Um, I didn't realize Aquaman 2 was coming out so late. Yeah. Um, I was surprised at that. Is, uh, is Blue Beetle this year as well? Because they've, they've dropped yep. clips on that. So Blue Beetle is, Blue Beetle is also this year. It is due. Now, James Gunn has said that's the first of his superhero movies, though. Did he do do anything with that one? It's gone no. too. No, it's not. That, that's funny because um, the Blue Beetle character really drew a lot of um, attention in uh, the animated media that they had. Yeah, in, you should go the, back and watch Old Man Theater. Yeah. We ran down Guns Universe, and Blue Beetle's not part of it. Yeah, yeah. And oh, you know what I heard too? Remember uh, Robert Pattinson's The Batman? Yep. It exists outside the DCU, but now they're yeah. saying, yeah. So that's yeah. where you're gonna get two Batman films uh, next year, probably. Well, that that's so that that whoever's um, James Gunn's superior can hedge his hedge their bets, and and if the Gunn universe kind of fails, well, we still have this other Batman that you can know. Oh, now absolutely. we'll build our universe off of this one, and just we'll abandon this one and we'll forget Gunn stuff, and now we're we're gonna have somebody else take it over. Let's get let's get JJ Abrams. He he always does a good job. Yeah, I think I think after the first couple of uh gun films, the DC will be uh, dead on dead on arrival as well, and they'll do another reboot. Mm-hmm. Uh oh, Wonka is gonna be a musical fantasy film prequel to Roald uh Roald Dahl's Charlie and Chocolate Factory and the original film. Talks <sighs> about uh, Wonka's early day before he became a chocolatier. Yeah, okay, pass. <laughs> Why? Why? What, what, what did he do before he became a chocolatier? Uh, I know, overthrew some third world countries with yeah. uh, weapons. Just just murdered children for kicks like in Saw. I don't know. Um, I don't, uh, Timothy don't know. Timothy Chalamet's playing Willy Wonka, so that's not a surprise at all. Yeah. Um, not... What What do you think about? Uh, I saw the the trailers for the clips for it for uh, Asteroid City, Wes Anderson's thing. I'm gonna go see it. I'm a Wes Anderson fan. Yeah. He doesn't miss too much. This one may be a little too cerebral for Wes Anderson fans, but I'm, I'm in. I'm worried that Wes Anderson is going to out Wes Anderson himself. And his, I, I'm worried that this will not be a movie. It'll all just be style put on the screen and have no story. That is a very valid concern, actually. That, that he gets too wound up and wrapped up in his, his, his style than to um, present. I do have a pick. For sleeper hit of the year, okay. Haunted Mansion coming out August eleventh. Eddie Murphy? Nope. And then another one. <laughs> uh, stars uh, I don't know Lakey Stanfield, Tiffany Haddish, Owen Wilson. Oops, wait a minute. Maybe I'll take maybe that back. Uh, Danny <laughs> DeVito, Ro- Rosario da- da- Dawson, Dan Levy, Jimmy Lee Curtis, Jared Leto. Oh, okay, maybe I'll really take that back. Um, yeah. I've seen I've seen the trailer. You heard it here first, folks. Uncle Gutty's sleeper pick of the year. <laughs> Haunted Mansion with Jared Leto. And... It's, it's like, oh, wait, wait. <laughs> uh, but I've seen the trailer. Oh, throw the oil on the fire. That'll put yeah. it out. Yeah. I, I've seen the, I've seen the trailer and all that. Stars and stars. Yeah. So I think it's got potential. The only thing that kind of sucks, though, was uh, Guillermo del Toro was attached to it at one point. Oh, uh, okay. That, that would have been. That would be interesting. That would have been. It, uh, because uh, he's done um, family movies. Yeah. Um, yeah, he's done good ones. Yeah, but now he's out and they're doing something else with it. So, uh, I think this could be fun. I think, but it's also carrying a hundred sixty million dollar budget, which is a pretty long haul to to make back. You're talking uh, uh, four million, four hundred million the uh, box office to to break even, which is a long haul to come back from. Well, the the budget for um, Flash was what five hundred million. Or or two hundred fifty million. I think two fifty three hundred. Two fifty. Um, so basically, you're looking at a return of uh, seven hundred million box office um, total to break even, factoring mark and all that. It's not doing it. Yeah. yeah, I'm I'm a box office movie junkie, so I I I keep track of stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. But I think the tail end of this of this movie year after from August onward is going to be really weird. Um, I can see Hollywood stumbling a bit too. I don't think Aquaman 2 will do as well 
as I think it will. I think it will still draw people who remember the first one, uh, but yeah. that whole gun specter of basically erasing it. Well, that and, and the specter of uh, what's her name there, um, Amber Heard. Amber Heard. Right? I heard she got almost reduced to like zero screen time. So yeah, yeah. yeah but I think I think the the gun. How the much gun erasure. love do the fans have for uh, Jason Momoa? How long are fans' memories? Because when did that one come out? Twenty seventeen. I think so. I don't or know why it took so long for a second one. Seventeen or nineteen? I I, I got to be twenty nineteen. That'd be fairly uh, recent. 18. I was, I was right on either side of it there. Five years between that and this one? Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's long. a long delay. I mean, I know we had the pandemic and all that stuff, so that that takes maybe two years off of it. But still, that's a three-year gap between your, your franchise here. So yeah. where, where can you stream DC movies? Is that the HBO Max? Yeah, I, right now so in, Canada, in Canada, that'd be how, Crave. Uh, how popular is the HBO Max and how popular is Crave? Crave, I think, is fairly popular because it's not, not just got the HBO stuff, but it's got a bunch of other, other stuff in there with it, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, like I said, Crave basically gets the stuff before Netflix. That's why, we, that's why it's good to have it. How, how popular is the HBO Max in, in the U.S.? I, now I it's know. called Max. That's all I need to tell you at that point. Great. So they've changed but, the name again. They're starting to blow stuff off their own service, so... So uh, HBO shoot themselves in the foot pretty much. If if a lot of people don't have that service, how are you going to refresh your memory and watch Aquaman 1 again before you see Aquaman 2 in December? Are you? Yep. A and are you going to bother? Yep. I think you're going to bother. Are are people going to think I'm not going to bother with this one because I, I've heard bad things about the DC Cinematic Universe. Are they going to skip it because they think it's going to be erased by the next wave of gun stuff anyway? I, I don't know. No, like I said, these these films are, are dead on arrival. Yeah. Yeah, Bernie, me too, man. What time to tie, to tie what time went off here, I think. Yep, yep. I think that... that uh, it's time for us to turn the lights off and <laughs> lock up the store. Final thoughts here, Switz? Uh, nothing really. Have fun when you can, guys. And, try, and yeah. Find that fun in whatever you can. Find it in your Comic Cons. Find it in your movies. Find it in uh, just hanging out with your friends like we're doing here. Uh, my thoughts basically if you want to go to con get a small one check it out check out something local even a geek market is also fun to go to it's like a geek flea market if you see any films between now and december that you think we uh will have an opinion on whatever let us know bring it up basically we'll tell you ours and all that but we don't go see everything so uh get there have fun and uh that's about it what do we, what do you want to talk about next well indiana jones we always talk about all right so that comes out uh, the 30th isn't it Comes out the thirtieth, basically. Week, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. I might, I might, yeah. I might. Also, when I, I see think it, you basically, maybe go and take your wife for your anniversary. <laughs> yeah, see Harrison Ford <laughs> prance around like that. Yeah, yeah. Let's put a let's put a, a breakdown of the Harry of the Harry Potter of the Indiana Jones franchises, and I'll talk a bit about that because it's got an interesting history. Yep. And uh, yeah, we can do that next time. I, Indiana I Jones. The best thing about um, Kingdom of the Crystal Skull is that it made Temple of Doom not the worst Indiana Jones movie. Ooh, true. <laughs> oh, my God. I mean, God. come on, really, because everyone knows that that before, Temple of Doom was kind of the worst. Was, was it was kind of the worst movie. one, actually. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, but, definitely. But what were number one and two? Uh, well, well don't number. answer yet. We'll save that for the yeah. National Man Theater. Oh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to go... Uh, Raiders, Last Crusade, Temple of Doom, Crystal Skull, and then Dollar Destiny. Oh, <laughs> I, I think, I'm thinking of the four. Yeah, there's, there's I, only four uh, without without including Dial of Destiny. But but don't tell everyone what our thoughts are now. You you no. kind of ruined it. You spoiled it. You, you told them. I, what I, I might change my mind. Well, you already told them one and two. Well, I might change my mind between them and there. Who knows? I might forget. Yeah, you won't. You won't. <laughs> All right, Switzy. Until uh, next time, may you take it easy. Yep, you too. Good night, everyone. Thanks right. for watching. Hey, everybody. There. Cheers. Have a good night.
Bye now. Bye.